Raichu Battlers, you know what it is. J Devin back at it with another Silk Arena Toxic Cup video. So the last one I did was a, a cheese team video. This one is not cheese. This is more of a meta video, but it definitely is spicy, um, particularly because we are going to be featuring Unpheasant. Um, I've done a lot, a lot of background research on Unpheasant. Honestly, I probably looked into Unpheasant way too much. It has a lot of interesting matchups. Um, obviously, I think it goes without saying a lot of its matchups and, you know, it's considerable wins and losses are pretty much the same as uh, Pidgeot's, pretty much the same as Star Raptors. Um, I like to think of Unpheasant as if um, uh, Skarmory and Star Raptor mated somehow and had a baby. That's what Unpheasant is because <laughs> it's squishy and it has the same typing. Um, and pretty similar stats spread in the Great League as um, Star Raptor does, but it has access to the Air Slash Sky Attacks combo, um, Sky Attack combo that that Skarmory does, right? But also given that it has access to to Heat Wave, so I guess that's a an attribute it adopted from uh, the Star Raptor side of the family. Anyways, um, what I like about Unpheasant here, I almost called it Star Raptor, but what I liked about Unpheasant obviously is even with its squishiness due to its um, attack stat, it, it, it can put on massive shield pressure. And in a lot of cases, if they don't shield, it's just gonna one hit KO period. Like um, if it doesn't one hit KO like a, a Drapion, for example, or let's say like 80% health, then it will get really close with just one sky attack. And also Heat Wave, if you find yourself in a shields down scenario against a Wormadam Trash, that will one HK KO. Um, one hit KO of uh, Wormadam Trash all day every day. So um, basically what, what I kind of use it as is um, kind of similar to how I started to use Staraptor when Toxic Cup uh, first came out. Basically use it to uh, eliminate shields um, and then play out from there. Make sure you get the shields down and then I'll have spammy picks in the back is the uh, the basic kind of concept, right? So kind of play it the, the same way. Nothing, nothing too special about it really other than um, the air slash the sky attack combo which um the reason i like it in particular obviously it's it's pretty energy efficient um but I, I think the main thing is um all the typings that are in this cup right now right honestly like i don't really see many people running steelix anymore like steelix has kind of dropped in popularity um you know things that really would resist and do a major you know have like a major massive threat to these flyers i don't i don't really see them anymore it's all you know it's all these water gunners it's all about wormadam trash scalvalier um gliscor now too as well i'm on i'm kind of on the gliscor hop hype train but um you know because of what everybody's been running i feel like it's um unpheasant's time to shine to be honest that was gg's game one there to sharky shout out to sharky um very competitive player very active in the pvp scene as well um but uh, back to what I was talking about. Okay, with Unpheasant, um, because of all the typings and what's popular versus not popular, you know, right now, at least from what I've gathered with my personal experience, Unpheasant really takes advantage of um, the current meta that's being run, um, I guess, by by popularity. Because in a, in a lot of um, shield advantage matchups, even with um, one or even two um, air slash energy advantage mat matchups, Unpheasant can just he can just tear through some picks, even like an Ice Fang Drapion. Like I said, on a Drapion, if you know if shields are down and we land a Sky Attack, that will do insane amounts of damage. I'll probably run a Sim and throw it up on here so you can see it um, when I edit this before the upload. But it's just it's nuts. The attack stat, you know, Sky Attack, then also having access to Heat Wave, it's definitely considerable, definitely considerable because that Heat Wave can answer a Scalvalier and the Wormadam Trash and Steelix if somebody actually brings one. And then for the most part, Sky Attack is gonna answer everything else. So I, I guess my, what I'm trying to say is I feel like there's nothing he really can't cover and there's nothing he really can't at least answer a little bit if you put your mind to it. So, um, oh yeah, I remember this part, this the part of this, this battle here with Sharky. So um, I shield here and this is the, the disadvantageous thing about um, Gliscor, right? Because he is a uh, ground and flying. He'll take double super effective from the ice damage, 256% damage per Powder Snow, which Powder Snow doesn't do that much, but when it stacks up that quick, it, it, it does a lot. It can do a lot. So I ended up getting the boost. I'm like, you know what? At this point, 
I got the boost. I want to see if I can wing attack down on the pilot one before he powder snows me down. That was not realistic. That's not going to happen even with the two stage boost. You're going to get a, a simultaneous KO like that, GG Sharky. Um, and this is pretty much um, closed out at this point. Sharky's definitely going to take the W. That Wormadam Trash has a little bit of an energy lead. And even though I can get this Aqua Tail, um, I, need, I need at least one more to even get close to the uh, the KO on that Wormadam Trash. And um, even though I'm going to resist the Iron Head he throws at me right here, um, basically the next confusion he gets in, Quillfish is gone just like just like that ggs so this is going to be game three for this best of three against sharky here we actually ended up doing another <coughs> excuse me we actually ended up doing another best of three with sharky but there are some other battlers who i did some rounds with that i'd like to feature as well so we will just be featuring this best of three now we definitely lost the lead they had the wormadam trash we had the quillfish i'm getting out of there instantly and um, we are in a eska versus eska mirror um, this can this is pretty interesting too. I mean, it was either this one or the uh, next best of three. But I feel like I feel like my Escavalier is like a wimp. Like, look how much damage their counter is doing to me compared to how much damage mine is doing to them. That might be like an an IV difference scenario kind of thing. I'm not sure, but they are definitely doing so much more damage per counter than I am with my Esk into theirs. Pretty nuts. Um, on my moveset for my Scavler, currently I do opt for Aerial Ace and Megahorn. I feel like that provides all the coverage I need, and Megahorn is just very, very good now. It's a very good move. Um, he has the Crustal here. The Crustal's coming out. Um, it does have access to Rock Slide, and it can get stabbed from it, so Crustal is definitely a strong pick. Do not sleep on a Crustal. Um, this might be... Um, I think this is a Rock Slide that hits us right now, actually. Yeah. Massive damage. And it's just neutral too. Look at that. It's like a nuke move. Now we're in a Wormadam Trash versus Wormadam Trash Mirror. Not really exciting. I'm basically just gonna like chill for a second and I'll. Okay, now, if I remember at this point, I basically just try to overcharge, but it's getting a little close for comfort. So I opt to throw the iron head because I've got plenty of energy at this point, but I also know that Sharky has plenty of energy. So I wanted to throw the iron head and then dip into the quillfish to catch the charge, which would kind of give me the um, energy advantage in the whole scenario, but I ended up not being able to do it, unfortunately. So I had to take that damage. Um, this is good news for me. At least I am able to throw the aqua tail into their crustal, but that thing with Fury Cutter, you know, Rock Slide Excisor, it will charge ridiculously fast, but the Aqua Tail is going to be super effective into it. And we did a little bit of chip, uh, chip damage into their Wormadam Trash with the uh, Water Gun, and we have this Iron Head that we can throw instantly. GG's Sharky. Shout out, mega shout out to Rizachi here. This was a very, very good set of battles. Like a very, very good set of battles, especially the last one in this set. It's nuts. It was so close. So here we go again, game one. With the fresh opponent, I'm gonna open up with the Unpheasant. A lot of people are not really familiar with Unpheasant as a pick. So, looks like they swapped. They instantly swapped. They opt for a bird versus bird showdown. Now, for the most part, I've looked into this, this specific matchup a lot. Um, in most scenarios, the Wing Attack Pidgeot can win. But the thing to consider here is that I had basically a two air slash energy lead because they swapped into my Unpheasant with their Pidgeot. Since I have that energy lead, the matchup's basically going to favor me. So to use that to my advantage, I can shield once, I believe, and then definitely throw another sky attack. If you swap into a Pidgeot with an Unpheasant, that's probably bad news. Um, so you want something to swap into you. You definitely want that energy lead when running a pick like Unpheasant. So um, at this point, you know, if they're going to throw another charge, I'm not going to shield. Um, that's the best way, I believe, to play this matchup since they opted for this it's not really a mirror, kind of a mirror. <coughs> Excuse me. Kind of a mirror match, I guess. I think I come in with the uh, Escavalier at this point. Okay, I do. I was hoping that I could just um, counter down before Rizachi was able to throw anything else, but I was not able to, unfortunately. So I'll let the Aerial Ace connect. It does a lot of damage. I don't like how much damage it does, but at least the Pidgeot is gone. Um, I'd rather save what I have going on with this uh, Bibarel here. And 
again, this is the, the same kind of situation. Because I have the energy lead here, and I am also going to be resisting those ice fangs, it might have just been best for Izachi to stay in with the, uh, the Scalvalier to do as much you know chip damage as they could with that Escalvalier, but I also at the same time don't think it was a terrible idea. Just with the way that I played for this game one in this set, I basically forced their forced their comp, you know, I kind of forced their hand a little bit. Because again, a lot of people are not familiar with those um, energy lead situations with you know niche weird picks like uh, like Unpheasant. Um okay. But this is why I, I actually had Drill Run on my Escavalier previously, but I just opted for the um what is it, the Aerial Ace Mega Horn set at this point, just because I prefer its consistency overall. GG's game one there, Rizachi. All right, let's go in for game two. So Rizachi opens with the Pidgeot. I've opened up with the Gliscor. So I really don't like this matchup, honestly. Um, it's, it, it can be kind of even, I guess, depending on shields. Basically what I need to get is the boost in this, in this matchup. I need the attack boost, which we got it, dude. First try, we got that, we got that boost. So I'm like, all right, all right, I'm shielding. I'm gonna stay in. I'm going to take advantage of the uh, attack boost that I have already. I don't know why I don't get these uh, these boosts this consistently at all in Go Battle League. That's kind of funny, right? Like I almost never get the boost in Go Battle League, but when I'm just doing regular trainer battles, right? If you send to an ultra friend, um, I feel like I get them pretty frequently. What, what, what's going on with that Niantic? What's 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 the uh, what's the sitch there, huh? Um, I believe this was just another aerial ace. Uh, but, but again, because I have the boost, I'm going to stay invested. Um, this battle and the previous one, actually all the battles in this video were basically blind. They didn't... Oh no, the last one was not blind. I apologize. Uh, but this one and the previous one were both blind. I didn't know their picks and they didn't know mine. So again, you know, I think that's it's good to play that way sometimes because if you run into picks that you're not familiar with, it's going to uh, help you, I guess, kind of uh, train and hone your, your intuition for different matchups. Um, I think that's a really important point to practice on sometimes. Now, it was good that I was able to bait with the Night Slash because I'm still boosted. Now I can <laughs> Earthquake the Hapout on its history. Then there, Eska comes in. <coughs> Excuse me. Not able to get another Night Slash, unfortunately, but that's okay because I have the uh, Quillfish here. And I believe Rizachi actually runs... Yeah, I think Rizachi runs the Drill Run. And this is where my poor little Quillfish gets one hit KO'd by a Drill Run. Oh, look at this. Oh, dude, Gonzo. He's out for the count, dude. G stinking G's. Um, and they definitely are gonna be able to access another drill run, but Wormbanana Trash is going to be taking neutral from the drill run, whereas the Quillfish takes super effective, and also Wormbanana Trash is actually tanky. Quillfish is not, so I'm not too worried about the drill run into the trash, even without, without the shield. Um, cause the scout layer, you know, even with the typing being advantageous, I guess, with the confusions, like it'll resist it, but it's still just too squishy. It can't hang in that scenario with trash. GG's. All right, now going in for uh, game three here with Rizachi. I actually ended up um, opting to lead with the Quillfish, hoping that I could catch an Eska lead, and we did. So, you know, we'll, we'll at least resist the counters, but that's, I feel like this is probably the best way to use Quillfish if you're using it. Not necessarily with Felstinger. I'm not saying that moveset's gonna be the best, but, you know, cause he has a lot of polarizing matchups, like he's either going to resist or he's gonna get deleted by confusion. It might be best sometimes to open with him if you're going to be running him. Because um, then you can play around with your comp and, you know, if I swap and I get an energy lead, um, how's that going to play out if they answer with something, right? So those are some of the things to consider, um, which is why I've comped right now the way that I have with the Unfez and Eska, Bibarel, and Quillfish. And then the Gliscor was kind of a wild card, to be honest, but definitely got to have that Wormadam trash in there. I just like having multiple options um, for coverage, basically. Um, Felsting. I don't know why I went Felstinger, honestly, into the, uh, the Pidgeot. I didn't need to do that. I, I guess 
I guess because I figured they definitely would shield because I was already boosted and it definitely could have been an Aqua Tail is why I did it. So I dedicate, I just, I love getting boosted. I like it too much, honestly, it's a problem. So now we have these, what is this, triple boosted at this point, triple boosted water guns. We almost get rid of the Pidgeot with just the water guns. That's absurd, that's nuts. Um, I think this was an Aerial Ace. Was it? Yeah, it was an Aerial Ace. So maybe they did not have it second moved or maybe they weren't able to quite reach a, a Hurricane yet. Um, which is why when I run Pidgeot, personally, I prefer um, Brave Bird over Hurricane. Even though, you know, it'll do less damage and it's not necessarily the recommended moveset. Um, it's definitely um, less energy cost and it can still OHKO um, some picks. That's just my two cents on it. Okay, here's here's what I'm talking about with the Drapion, right? So they're at, they're at like 75 to 80% health now. Watch this Sky Attack damage. No shields. Watch the damage. Boom, dude. Look at that. Drapion's gone! It's gone! I think this was a... Was this an Aqua Tail? It might... Oh, I think this was. This, this was the good part. So it was an Aqua Tail. It does not quite KO. And I'm able to counter down. And then it's... What is this? Eska versus Eska? Yeah. Oh! Just one counter away, dude! Just one! GG's! Alright, so this next and this last best of three here is going to be up against Panic. Shout out to Panic. Much love to you, my guy. We actually um, played, I guess, game one before this, but we glitched out, it timed out, I'm not sure what happened, so I just uh, reset the app and then we restarted. So um, this is the same thing I did before. I insta-swapped out of the mirror, actually, and I just went in with the Eska because, you know, again, Eska is one of those things where if they don't have, like, Fire Fang Hippowdon, for example, or something that can delete the uh, Scalvalier, having that energy lead can be super, super clutch. Super, super clutch. So we're able to put on a lot of pressure, I guess. We are gonna be, I don't know, cause he had, yeah, I forgot he said that too. So he had an Ice Fang Drapion the first time. And then when it failed out, he said, oh, I brought the wrong Drapion. And I was like, okay, what? Isn't the Ice Fang one the way to go? So he apparently he actually wants to run a variant of a Drapion that's Bite and Fell Stinger. And I see why, like, Look at, look at these boosted bites. This is completely absurd. This is like, I feel like this is worse. Not worse. I feel like this is more efficient than the triple boosted quillfish that we saw. Cause this just, that bite just deletes, dude. It shreds. It is a Pokemon mower. That's exactly what it is. He just bites everything. All right, so I throw the Aqua Tail. I don't wanna, you know, BM or try and bait or anything with the uh, Fell Sting or with how low the health is. I wanna, Throw the Aqua Tail, dip out into my wormy trash here, and then see how we play out from here. Now, no matter what they're gonna throw, Psybeam, Iron Head, Bug Buzz, I'm not going to shield. I definitely need to save the shield. Um, that's another point, I guess, to that I wanted to bring up during this video, since we're on the topic of Wormadam trash here. I opt for the moveset of Confusion, Iron Head, and Psybeam. I don't really particularly feel the, the need at all for any reason, really, to to run Bug Buzz. I mean, if it's a matter of coverage, like I already have that coverage in my comp. Like I have I have plenty of options and flexibility. I personally prefer the Psybeam for um, things like Golbat or things that will still take the super effective from, <coughs> excuse me, the Psychic damage, right? Like a Psybeam, let's say, into an unshielded Quillfish. That Quillfish is Gonzo. Then if they also have a Golbat, then I can just keep throwing the Confusion. So that's why I run Psybeam. Um, I know in a lot of scenarios, Bug Buzz is better. Bug Buzz is preferred because it gets stab, um, whereas it does not from the side beam. But that, that's just my my opinion on it. And if you're wondering why side beam, that, I guess that's why. Um, so I end up using the shield there. I think this was an L, wasn't it? I had to use the shield, but there's like really nothing I can do, I think. Did I have anything else left or was that it? Oh no, yeah, that's it. GG's. All right, so going in for the next game here against Panic, I knew I had to um, spice things up a bit. I had to, I had to throw him a curveball. You know, I had to play these kind of plays that he might not be familiar with and he might not see coming. That's how I'm going to end up taking victory because his his strat with the the bite um, Phil Stinger Drapion is just so overpowering. So uh, this is the matchup I end up going for, even though the Unpheasant is squishy. I know for a fact that if I land at least one sky attack, 
just let me land a one, then the Drapion's not gonna be a problem anymore. Then, I, then I'm no longer worried about the Drapion, right? Look at that. It's gone. It's gone. I don't care about your Drapion anymore. What are you gonna do, Felstinger me? Are you gonna Aqua Tail me right now? Go for it. Go for it. Doesn't quite KO, but the Bites will definitely finish, finish us off super quickly. So he did win the lead there, but I'm pretty satisfied having like mellowed down the Drapion threat because that is, that was absurd what it, what, what it did for him in game one, GG's. Now I was able to wing attack down pretty quickly with my uh, Gliscor here, which does give us a little bit of an energy lead. I don't remember how many I got. It looks like it was two. Yeah, it was two. So now I've uh, got some energy built up for this uh, Wormadam Trash. Since we are two versus two shield, I would rather not shield bait actually, since I had the energy lead. Um, I would rather just straight throw the Earthquake. And he does not shield. The Earthquake does land. It does connect. So we did insane damage. I'm like, okay, since it landed, and I have, I guess, you know, the health advantage or the damage advantage, whatever you want to call it. Since I'm basically winning at this point, I'm going to use a shield. And I think I dedicate to a wing attack down, yes. And then I've got some energy built up for the last pick he has, which has two shields, and it is a Flygon. So, excuse me, I think I bumped the mic. Um, the Flygon, I don't want to throw an Earthquake at it. I just want to throw the uh, the Night Slashes. And I build up a little bit more energy, and I was hoping to, to swap quick enough to where, you know, he would have just thrown a Dragon Claw and then I catch it with the Eska, but he was smarter than that. So I'm pretty sure... With how the battle's going at this point, this is going to be an Earth Power because he needs to put that pressure out since he only has the Flygon left. And it was an Earth Power, so it was a good shield on our part. And now I'm just doing, I'm just letting Eska do his thing. Counter, Aerial Ace, just throw throw everything you got at the Flygon. Just go, go. I love I love his animation too. He's like, <laughs> I love his Scavalier, dude. He's got like a Mohawk too, like a Knight's mo. I don't know what it is. Don't listen to me, okay? It was a late night. Now we had this Night Slash good to go though for the uh, the Flygon there, which I think doesn't quite KO all the way. I think he actually gets off one more Dragon Claw. Okay, there's the Night Slash. Yeah, we got the boost though. One more Dragon Claw, which is not going to KO. And then the Wing Attack um, closes this out. So uh, GG's panic. All right, now this is going to be the final battle, I guess, for this video and the uh, closing round against panic it looks like he opts to open up with the drapion again i'm like okay i, I was kind of counting on that too but with the way i comped for this battle i know i can still take care of the drapion he loves to open with that thing um <clears throat> i don't know that you know opening with a, a bite fell stinger drapion would be the best thing to do if anything maybe like anchor with it have it be a mid to late game play and then save some shields for it so maybe have some things up front um, that might not need a shield, you know, maybe some bulkier picks and then anchor with the uh, the bite fell stinger drape on because he doesn't put on You know a ton of shield pressure What really where he's gonna shine with the variant um, for bite fell stinger is that fast move damage. So I mean who am I to talk because it's like He still has two shields and it's single-handedly basically wiped out half my team already So I'm probably just speaking complete nonsense there, but that's just my thoughts on it um, so whatever he comes in with next, I really don't care. I'm just gonna straight throw the Surf. Looks like it is a Golbat. I've definitely built up enough energy to throw back-to-back -back Surfs into the Golbat here. It looks like the first one does not go shielded. Um, I'm anticipating the second one to go shielded. Since he does have two shields, he's gonna wanna be uh, saving that Golbat there. So um, what did I, I think I might've come back in, oh, obviously with the, the Wormadam Trash here. And this, I guess this goes to show and to prove why I prefer side beam right because he just uses shield a lot of times if you just use one you don't want to use one right after kind of a psychology thing so the side beam th does insane damage to the golbat like the golbat's gonzo um, it's kind of a surprise factor it does work sometimes sometimes it doesn't work at all especially if they bring steelix it makes the steelix matchup just that much more of a pain which i mean with wormadam trash you're probably just going to lose to steelix anyway no matter what set you're running um, but the Flygon here, okay, so again, at this point with how the battle's pacing, I'm like, there's no way he's going to try and bait with a Dragon Claw, especially not against the Eska, like he's got to land the Earth Power to get me out of there. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, he's able to reach another Earth Power at this point, which is going to close out our Eska, our Eska's going to be Gonzo, 
Then I come back in and I think I'm able to confusion down. No, I think, okay, yeah, so he threw, I remember now, he threw, he throws a Dragon Claw here, um, which obviously I'm going to tank, then I'll Confusion down, and I basically end up just throwing, I believe the, I think I throw another Psybeam into the, <laughs> yeah, I do, I throw another Psybeam into the Golbat there. That's crazy. GG's. G's, stinking G's. Again, though, GG's, GG's indeed, GG's all around. Thank you for, you know, those who sent when I asked for battles, and we did some battles, shout out to, um, to Panic, to Sharky, and to Rizachi. <clears throat> Much love to you, battlers. Thank you for the support. And thank you for battling, as always. Um, again, though, you know, I guess, you know, let me let me know what you think about this team. Let me know what you think about Unpheasant. I do encourage you to, to not sleep on it. You know, if you don't want to run it, I understand. Like, it's, it's pretty squishy, and you might have to know a lot of matchups to make it work. Um, I did a lot of homework on it, so I feel like I kind of know how to use it. Um, but at least, you know, do your best to study up on it so that you can be prepared. And, you know, hopefully at least me um, sharing this video helps you be a little prepared. Because if you're not prepared for that on Pheasant, it will... It'll it'll get rid of your Drapion. It, does, it, it doesn't care if you have an Ice Fang Drapion, you have a Bite Drapion. Um, that Sky Attack will still do... A, a crazy nuts amount of damage to a pile of swine too. So be aware of the Unpheasant, whether they open with it um, or if they close with it. If you see one in your opponent's lineup, right, in their team of six, and they don't open with it, be very wary to save shields. Because if they anchor and they save a shield, if not both shields for that Unpheasant, it's probably going to sweep you if you don't at least save a shield as well too. My personal recommendation on, you know, how to actually counter on Pheasant. Um, obviously, the first thing I'm going to recommend is a Steelix. Um, but even then, you still got, you know, have to be aware of the heat wave that it can throw at you. Uh, but realistically, if you don't want to, you know, run a polarizing pick like Steelix and you still want to have potential coverage, Water Gunner. I would answer on Pheasant with a Beaverell because, you know, the Beaverell is pretty tanky and it has that energy efficiency with Water Gun and Surf. Um, it can definitely put up more than a fight against the Unpheasant, which is which is funny, right? Because you would think maybe you want to answer the Unpheasant with the uh, Wormadam Trash or with uh, an Escavalier. But uh, no, an, an Unpheasant doesn't really care about those matchups, especially with an energy lead. I'm telling you, the 1-2 to two Air Slash energy lead, Unpheasant will do some work. Uh, something that's mega super duper spice, borderline cheese, but could also do a very good job is going to be uh, Galvantula. You gotta keep in mind though, with Galvantula, it is going to be electric and bug typing. Um, now electric resists flying, but bug does take super effective. So Galvantula is also still squishy and it will be taking neutral from the air slash. So, you know, Galvantula can counter Unpheasant very well, but if Unpheasant ha has an energy lead and a shield, it's probably still gonna beat the, the it's probably still gonna beat the Galvantula. So you no, know, you want to go for a pick that's either going to shut it down or something that's going to outbulk it and something that's not gonna care about its damage output. Uh, but anyways, battlers, that is it for this video. Thank you very, very much for watching again and for all your support. If you did like this video, um, please let me know by leaving a like on the video. It does help a lot. So yeah, subscribe if you feel my vibe. Power up, punch the notification bell for all that PvP content. That is it for this video. We'll see you in the next video. Battlers, have a good stinking day.